Welcome to MBRF podcast. It's amazing to be here. It's a, it's a nice place. It's, it's nice to film a, to shoot a podcast in the presence of all those people passing around. I, I kind of like it. It's different. I've yeah, never I, been... I, um, I like the glass and everyone looking in. It's like a fish tank. <laughs> um, good to have you. It's brilliant to be here. Tell us, tell us first a little bit about Lisa Forte. So I'm a cybersecurity expert. I specialize in helping companies prepare for the worst, to so prepare for a cyber attack. Um, and I absolutely love the UAE, so I'm delighted to be here in Dubai. Okay, okay. So you help people prepare for the worst, which is cyber attacks. Yes. So we look at sort of if your company was to be hit with a cyber attack, what would you do? How would you handle that? How do you notify your customers? How do you notify the government, the police, all of those sorts of things? Brilliant. And um, I think that's one of the topics that touches everyone at heart, if you think about it. Yeah. Honestly, not only companies. So even as individuals, I guess... Um, being vulnerable um, in today's um, available technology makes all of us feel a little bit icky. If you use technology, you're vulnerable to a cyber attack. Stop that's, saying that. That's it. You're scaring me. <laughs> that's what I do. I travel the world scaring people. <laughs> how, how bad is it? It's really, really bad. To, to put it lightly, it's... Um, Actually, we, we've had the worst year for a long time. This year, 2024, has seen more attacks than ever before globally. Um, it affects, as you said, it affects companies, it affects governments, it affects militaries, it affects individuals. Every single person that inter interacts with technology in any way, shape or form is potentially vulnerable to being hacked. And um, that's the problem that we have. Is it getting better or worse? It's getting significantly worse, unfortunately. Wow. Um, but we, we're interacting the with positivity, technology. The positivity, Lisa, come on. I come from the UK <laughs> and I bring all this positivity to Dubai. It's, it's you're very welcome. <laughs> Honestly, I did not think this podcast is going to be this much fun. <laughs> Guys, it's not going to be 10 minutes. I'm sorry. All right. Um, I don't know why I'm smiling. All you're telling me is bad news. How, what's, <laughs> what's, what's on the good side? Can we... Can we protect ourselves there are ways we can protect ourselves and there's lots of things that we're doing i mean if you look at the uae for example what's really interesting about the uae is it's ranking really one of the top in the world for digital competitiveness for other technologies and innovation um, so in that respect it's at the forefront of a lot of this which is why it's a really exciting summit to be at today and you know hearing all these ideas that are being uh, talked about is fantastic you know we're talking about ai we're talking about how we use ai in defense and all the other things that we want to do and I think that's why these sorts of things are so important okay I'm just getting bad ideas and bad thoughts Lisa thank you for this because now you said when you said we can use AI for defense I'm thinking we can also use AI for offense well, that is the concern. Anything that you create, the attackers can use as well. So if we are using AI, the attackers could potentially also use AI. And that creates an interesting challenge, I think, for the future. Um, so I'm talking today, I'm doing a talk on cybersecurity, and I'm going to be focusing on the sorts of technologies we use. So some of the stuff I'm going to be talking about is things like having Alexa in your house and the security risks there. Your car is connected to the internet, your watch, your phone, you're using Netflix, you're using social media. Everything you do touches the internet now. So if something happens, that's now going to have an enormous effect on you, on your life, on the country, everything. Can I, can I take you back um, to way down levels? Can we please define what a cybersecurity risk is for an individual? Just to explain it to the average or what is it in the simplest form? It's essentially someone who's not you, who you haven't given permission to, getting into your account, or into your car, or into your Alexa, or whatever it is. And that might be to steal money, that might be to steal data, that might be to blackmail you. It could be a whole number of reasons. So it's basically someone who can invade your digital privacy. Correct. In it's any like, way of... It's like breaking into your house, but digitally. Okay, and can we quickly tell people from... Because I don't think people realize that. What's in your digital house? Everything your bank, your money, listen, listen. your passwords, 
your access into everything. Everything you do is online. If you think about it, if you book a flight or your passport details are on there, if you pay on Amazon or your, your house address is there, your credit card details photos, are entered. Photos, families. Photos, family. Um, if you're using Alexa, your voice recordings in your house are stored in a cloud. So if you start to, when you start to work out how much data you're putting out there, and then you're using a terrible password on an account, it suddenly starts to look like a bit of a, something maybe we need to address. What's the relationship between knowledge and cybersecurity? Um, I would say there's quite a, quite a significant link. So generally speaking, I think people don't really understand what cybersecurity is. And sometimes when I say to people, you know, you might be hacked if you do this, they say, why would I be hacked? I'm nobody. I don't have loads of money. I'm not important. I'm not a government leader. So why would anyone want to hack me? But you have some money and you have data. So actually you are attractive. And you might not even notice, I did a talk in London actually not long ago uh, to a bunch of lawyers and I was talking about social media and I said to them, have you been onto your Instagram account and seen how many people are logged into your Instagram account? And some of the lawyers in the audience looked at their Instagram account as I was talking and said, there's six different people logged into my account and they hadn't even noticed. What? <laughs> so you can see this on Instagram. You can go and see how many active sessions there are. And you may have other people who are logged into your Instagram account. Who pretend to be you. Correct. And, and you don't even notice. And those could be what cousins, boyfriends, girlfriends. They could be that. They could just be completely random people somewhere in the world who are using your account to send, you know, Bitcoin scams and things like that to other people. And you don't necessarily even notice. Oh, it's that, it's that severe. It can be that severe, yeah. And when you, when you said that um, I don't have that much money, why would people want to um, go into my account? I, I like that a lot because, because I, I thought about it also. It could mean that you're an individual who can apply for a loan. Correct. Who can um, bring money, but not to you, to someone else who yep. pretends to be you. So You have a credit card. A credit card's useful. I actually got scammed not long ago. Really? About three weeks ago. But but the bank did. I mean, they, they brought the money back. But yeah. yeah. Do you remember how it happened? The only thing that I remember is the bank kept on asking me, asking me one question. Did you receive an OTP and share it with anyone? And I said, no. And they said, then you're good. We're yeah. going to get the money back. Yeah. But I was scammed through Apple.com. Really? And when I called the bank, they told me, no, it can't be a scam. It's apple.com. It's um, one of the more secure. So I guess there's nothing secure. Um, I think I'm a very untrusting person <laughs> because of my line of work. So, um, but I would say, you know, if you look at, for example, there are situations where there's been, for example, an airline, I won't name the airline, um, where people have gone and bought flights. And what the airline didn't realize was the hackers were basically sitting behind the platform. So every time you put in your name and your credit card details, the attackers took the name and the credit card details. And they were doing this for months. No one realized. And obviously the attackers are there using the money and spending it on the credit cards. And no one could figure out why this was. And then suddenly it all came down to, well, everyone has bought a ticket from this airline's website. Legitimate website, legitimate company. But they hadn't realized their website had been hacked by these people. So, so again, they were sitting behind the platform, i.e. there is a platform where you go and book your tickets. Yeah. And they mirrored that platform Correct. so someone else has access to it. Yes. And, and the airline didn't realize. The airline didn't realize for ages. And they were just siphoning off all of this data that people were putting into the to book their legitimate flights. Wow. Lisa, I can talk about this for hours, honestly. Not because it's a pleasant topic. <laughs> <laughs> all right. What do we do? Last question. What are we doing about this? Can we make it better? Do you see a better future coming? I do. I think the one thing as individuals, if you're listening to this and you want to do something immediately, make sure every single account you have has a really secure password. And ideally, you've used multi-factor authentication. So a text message code that comes to your phone or an app that provides you with a code. Something like that will make your account so much harder to compromise. Wow. Wow. Lisa, 
Thank you very much. It's just spreading my joy around the world. Thank you for spreading the joy around the world. But I, I'll tell you what, I, I'd rather know. I'd rather know. Um, I think I'm going to change all my passwords today. Uh, right after this podcast. Um, and um, I, I'd love to do a, a longer form podcast about this topic. If you're still around. In, um, Definitely. Well, I look forward to it. Thank you for having really. me. Um, from MBRF podcast, Lisa Forte did a fantastic job telling us about how safe the world is. Um, so we'd like to thank Lisa. Lisa, you want to say something final? Thank to you that? so much for having me. And I just, I love being back in the UAE and Dubai. Thank you. <laughs>